First up, we have offensive coordinator Chad Scott. Questions for Coach Scott? Greg? Chad, um, Neil was just saying, sort of up and down this past Saturday offensively, you did some things very well, some things like to have done better. I guess it's every game. But what, what do you need to do this week? We need to be the uh, pass the ball, and we need to pass the ball. I thought the receivers did, uh, you know, did a good job. You know, we got to trigger the ball at quarterback, and be able to pass the ball. And we got to not have as many. We gave up too many tackles for losses. Uh, when I say tackle for loss. We gave up too many negative plays, whether that be a tackle for loss or or a sack. So those would be two things we got to we got to get corrected. Is we got to be able to trigger the ball when we need to in the pass game, and then we got to eliminate all the negative plays. Been a big problem this year for the most part. Yeah. Anything in particular? That I thought that? they. Uh, I thought they did a pretty good job of mixing up the twist up front, and you know, I was trying to send some junk pressure. We saw a lot of uh, pressure from the edge that we hadn't seen uh, throughout the game plan, and so they had some good answers to stop some of the things we were trying to do uh, in the motion game to split the defense. So they had some good answers for it. So we got some of the stuff we got to calm down a little bit and just line up and play ball. What have been some of the things specifically that Texas Tech presents difficulties with the defense with? I think they'll uh, mimic a little bit of what uh, Arizona did and what uh, UCF did. I thought those two teams had good plans for us uh, in regards to muddying up the uh, – Mudding up the front, confusing the, uh, the offense line scheme, and and trying to you know take away lanes for the backs. And those are things we don't see that on film. On film, we see what we've always seen with all these teams. It looks like it's going to be a normal base defense. They're going to be gap sound and be what we see on film. And then they come out on Saturdays and, and look totally different than what we've seen. So I think we'll get some of that. So at this point, we've seen it a couple times now. So we're going to be uh, you know. Not, you know, not, not to say do a lot, but we, we, we're going to be kind of simple in what we do, and so we can practice all the various looks so we can be prepared for the junk. Following the theme I'm, uh, of a feature I'm doing, uh, favorite Thanksgiving memory thanks, and favorite Thanksgiving food? Favorite Thanksgiving food, macaroni and cheese by far. <laughs> Hands down, no questions asked. That's, even, that's without doubt. Uh, memory? I don't know. It's a lot of memories. It's a lot of great memories. I, I mean, we've always we've always played on Thanksgiving. I, I want to say last year's Baylor game was Thanksgiving. I believe so. Yeah. So that's that's a phenomenal memory right there. It was a uh, eighth win. Jaheen White, a true freshman, had to walk off a touchdown pass from Garrett Green for the, so that would be for the eighth win of the season. So that'd be a great memory right there. Most recent memory. That for your mom's or, or now that's my own recipe right there. Uh -huh. I got my own little personal <laughs> recipe. <laughs> Uh, I got my own little personal uh, recipe. I'm actually gonna do that for the uh, the running backs this week. We're gonna on, on Wednesday we're having a, a pre Thanksgiving meal. Get them two days to kind of uh, walk it off before we play. So that's why we're going a day early. <laughs> secret recipe. Secret recipe. Yeah. Not out of a box with. Not out of a box. Not at all. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> that's not eating out of uh, mom and grandma's uh, cabinet either. That's my own little deal. Done so much motion. Um, yeah. I've, this is the first season I've been covering you. It's just so yeah. much motion. I know it's to just like you said, like yeah. the defensive line that they're trying to do it to muddy up and confuse right. the offensive line. You're trying to do the same thing. How effective do you feel that that that's been with all of that yeah. movement? I, mean, I feel like it's really effective. Or I really do uh, because you know a lot of times defense, particularly when they simple in what they do, um, they they can recognize formations. They can recognize receiver splits and be able to tell based off tendency and how much we've done certain things at certain formations, what's possible to come. But when you line up in you know different formations, whether it be an unbalanced check, could be different th uh, three backs in the backfield. You line up in different things that they have checks to, and then you shift out of that. It forces them to communicate. Now when they start having to communicate and relay that communication across the board, you know they're not ready to go on the snap of the ball, pin them down, and, and go tack the ball. And so that allows us to get an extra hand. Could be a numbers game. Could be the fact that they're not ready, and it gives us an, an advantage. Could be what you guys saw last week. We did a phenomenal job last week not having any penalties because three offsides with the motion and whatnot. So it gives us an advantage. And I think an easy answer for it is for teams to just say, screw it. Just, when you see the motion, just add on and, and blitz, and hopefully you can disrupt it or hit home. Hit home meaning affect the quarterback in some way, rush him out of the pocket. Uh, you know, hurry is uh, decision making before they can execute the play. And so that's why we want to be a little bit more simple in what we're doing so we can work those various looks. But I think it has been very effective. And our guys like it. Uh, 
they like it. It's fun. Uh, it creates a lot of confusion for them. It creates a lot of space for guys to run the football. And it creates a lot of uh, coverage breakdown in the back end. That's why we got to be able to trigger the ball because we've had a lot of coverage busts because of it. We just got to be able to trigger the ball. Seems like, like you know, this game is so hinged upon the just seconds or half seconds, and stuff like that gives you that half second, that exactly. second, just to give them the, right. that inch or that yard exactly. to to get open. Right, exactly. And like I say, and it's uh, and, it, and it's fun. We can kind of dictate at the, uh, the tempo in which we play, which is really good, and it's been really good in which and the tempo in which we play, and we kind of dictate whether or not we want to play fast or slow, and. And then honestly, it, it, you know, Garrett Green, it, it suits him. You know, it gives him the best chance for us to be go out and be successful with him leading us too. How would you evaluate the wide receivers right now? Hudson stepping up in the last couple weeks. Has been a little bit more drops in there? Have kind of been all year? That was a problem more last uh, year? No, nah, not really. I think uh, we've done a better job uh, creating space, you know, when it's been man coverage. We just got to be the trigger the ball when they're open. And they made some timely catches, you know, like the Rodney Gallagher catch. What a phenomenal catch right there. And then, uh, you know, the Hudson Clement catch to ice it in the end. You know, like three, uh, speaking specifically, the Rodney Gallagher catch, phenomenal catch. Man, that's a tough catch to make. He made that. The Justin Robinson catch on the fourth and three, you know, that's a, that's a critical catch that a week ago, that same play. He dropped that same play on the fourth down. So to see him come back and execute, that was huge. And then obviously the, uh, the, the play that I felt like iced it in the end, the uh, catch by Hudson Clement. That was the ball that's thrown outside his uh, framework. So I don't really think it's just that I'm, they hadn't had as many catches. It's just been that some of the catches they might have dropped is coming at crucial times. So that, that obviously sticks out a lot more. So it's easy. So it's great for them to come back a week later and make those same catches in a crucial situation. So it, it kind of. I'd imagine your mentality also is though going into this Texas Tech game, knowing the offense they're bringing to the table, that that's the one game. You gotta have as little drops oh, as possible. Doubt. Absolutely. Like, and then, the receivers and quarterback gonna be a big deal. Absolutely, right? it's gonna be huge. And we gotta do what we did this week. What I mean by that, like we did a phenomenal job. We were hundred percent on fourth downs. And we were you know, weren't as good on third downs. We we're really good in the first half. Uh weren't as good, you know, uh, as a whole. But we we're we we're hundred percent on the fourth down. And what that does, it wears down defenses, stand plays, and we did a phenomenal job. We controlled the possession of the game, the entire game. We controlled the possession of the game every quarter. So if we can be uh, be better on third downs and continue to be better, continue to you know do what we did last week, which is sustain the uh, the change moving on fourth down and stem plays, that's going to be huge for us. So that'll be the emphasis this week. And, and like I said, the receivers, I thought they did a good job last week getting open. We just got to be able to trigger the ball. When you say trigger the ball, is that a matter of trusting the Yeah, just let it go, man. Like, or what? I mean, what goes into that? What, well, you know, uh, those guys with all the twisting and you know the different movement they caught, they uh, did to create you know a couple of negative plays. Sometimes in the past game, you get all that twisting and you just see different colored jerseys just crossing your face. But we're doing a great job covering it up. So, got to Jesus got to do a great job just keeping his eyes downfield, trusting, and protection in front that we'll pick it up and and letting it go. Yeah, what's the next step that Clement has to take to? become an elite receiver. Um, can you picture the day when he's catching 60, 70 balls in the I really can. I really can. Uh, he's done a phenomenal job in all season taking care of his body. He's been, for the most part, healthy. Missed a couple, uh, I think, a game or so. The next step, like I say the next step for him would be to, you know, when he gets to a point where he catch, he does a phenomenal job catching, you know, making tough catches, contested catches. Uh, and he's done this in the past where he's had a phenomenal, done a phenomenal job taking some of those catches and making a guy miss and going the distance. Had a couple of them last year. So for me, I think it would be the next step would be for him when he he's able to, you know, make those those catches and, and turn those, you know, 16, 17 yard catches from 16, 17 yards to the, the big 40, 50 yard touchdown. But, I mean, how no. fast? How fast? How fast is he? <laughs> he's he's actually he, he runs really well. You know, he's late in the season. He's a bigger guy. He's he's asked, he's added some weight to him, so that may impact a little bit how he plays and how fresh he is at this point. But he can run pretty good. We just got a bit of hit him in stride, keep him on the move. But I, that would say that'd be the biggest thing. He's got to do a great job keep him hitting him in stride while he's still running, so he can continue to keep his speed and go to the dis go to the distance. Traylon Davis does the dirty work, obviously, we Man. talked about it. And then you dial one up and he drops it. Man. I tell you what, first of all, no one more hurt than Traylon Davis. Uh, uh, trust me. That's a drop to remember. Yeah, there ain't no doubt. It was funny because on the headset, he said, Man, 
Talk with Brian. It's the touchdown here. You don't need you don't need to call an extra play because he's gonna score this right here. I just knew he was gonna be wide open. He was. And he dropped it. It's unfortunate. We'll we'll find another way to get in the ball, but uh, nobody's more hurt than him. I wish we could have put it on a little, little, little better, a little cleaner. He ain't used to catching the ball like that, so that ball that that's the ball that Cole Taylor catches all day long, but a little bit outside of Trailer's uh, framework. For a couple of years now, you've talked about how he's okay not been the pass catching option, but does do you, does anyone need to have a conversation with him now to keep his spirits up? Because that's pretty. Difficult. I'm not. He's good. He, he's good. He's good. And and I, you know the teammates, his teammates did a phenomenal job going to pat him on the back because they didn't, you know, it wasn't a deal. You look at it sometimes, a guy like that blocks and he gets the opportunity, drops the ball. Or in some cases, you might think guys would laugh, but they understand how important that is to him and what it meant to him. So those guys immediately rallied to him and put their arm around, pat him on the back, told him the next opportunity to come, you'll get it. And I thought that was awesome. So he responded. Yep. Thank you all. Happy Thanksgiving to you all.